Donald Trump has spoken to Vladimir Putin seven times since leaving the White House. We just got a bombshell new report from Bob Woodward's new book that details Trump's interactions with Putin behind the scenes, the way that he secretly sent aid during COVID, and much, much more. Make sure you stick around. We have a lot to break down this video. Drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. And just to lay the groundwork of this article that reads, Trump secretly stayed in touch with Putin after leaving office, new book says, just to lay a little bit of the groundwork so you know what is it stake. We are about to enter an election where democracy abroad is up for grabs. If Donald Trump gets back into office and emboldens people like Vladimir Putin to take Ukrainian land, if he cedes Ukrainian land, that'll further embolden people like Xi Jinping, people like Kim Jong-un. The liberal world order that we've spent decades building and securing with NATO would crumble and then countries like Russia and China would be setting the standard for the world. And of course, the U.S. foreign policy hasn't been perfect over the past few decades, but we can say with absolute certainty that the U.S. setting the global standards, that Sweden setting the global standards is better than Russia and China. So that is what is at stake. Millions of Ukrainians, people in Taiwan, and people at home. Donald Trump would cede this land, and this says, a new book by journalist Bob Woodward also reveals that Donald J. Trump, while still in office, secretly sent Vladimir Putin what were then rare COVID-19 tests for the Russian leader's personal use personal you. This is so, this is so insane. Former President Donald Trump has secretly spoken with President Vladimir Putin of Russia as many as seven times since leaving office, even as he was pressuring Republicans to block military aid to Ukraine to fight Russian invaders, according to a new book by the journalist Bob Woodward, who broke Watergate a while back. Of course, you guys know. The book, titled War and scheduled to be released next week, describes a scene in early 2024 at Mar-a-Lago, Mar Mr. Trump's estate in Florida, when the former president ordered an aide out of his office so he could conduct a phone call with Mr. Putin. The unidentified aide said the two may have spoken half a dozen other times as well since Mr. Trump left the White House. So we have a foreign president directly influencing a former president of the United States, and he also is directly influencing people like Tim Poole, people like Jack Posobiec. All of these different right-wing influencers are being influenced by Russian propaganda, but it is a top-down effort coming from Donald Trump himself. He is the Russian stooge at the top, and Vladimir Putin's the puppet master. The uh, the book also reports that Mr. Trump, while still in office, secretly sent Mr. Putin what were then rare tests for the virus for the Russians' personal use, not to help the people of Russia, which would be equally as bad. Actually, no, I think it's worse that he sent it to Putin for personal use. That is insane. It's like, hey, buddy, I hope you're okay. Mr. Putin, who has been described as particularly concerned about being infected at the time, urged Mr. Trump not to publicly reveal the gesture because it could damage the American president politically. Quote, I don't want you to tell anybody because people will get mad at you, not me, Mr. Putin reportedly told him. Was this before or after they cuddled in bed all night? Jesus. The disclosure is now raised. New questions about Mr. Trump's relationship with Mr. Putin just weeks before an election that will determine whether the former president will reclaim the White House. A copy of the book was obtained by the New York Times and the Washington Post, where Mr. Woodward has worked for more than a half a century, and CNN, where he often appears as a commentator. But there is much, much more. Let's keep breaking this down really quickly. This tweet reads, Trump has spoken with Vladimir Putin seven times since leaving the White House. When Bob Woodward asked Trump A. Jason Miller whether Trump and Putin had spoken since he left the White House, he said, quote, um, uh, not that, uh, not that I'm aware of, Miller told Woodward. I have not heard that they're talking, so I pushed back on that, Miller then added. Woodward writes that Biden's director of national intelligence, Avril Haines, quote, carefully hedged when asked about whether there were any post-presidency Trump-Putin calls. Quote, I wouldn't purport to speak what President Trump may or may not have done. She's clearly hedging there. He may have done it. He may not have done it. Now, before I continue on with this article, because there are more bombshells, I want to show you how this perfectly links to this appearance that Trump made a few weeks back with Zelensky. He says in this clip, it takes two to tango. He's essentially bullying Zelensky. And just watch this clip with the new context in mind. I also have a very good relationship, as you know, with President Putin. And I think uh, if we win, I think we're going to get it resolved very quickly. Very well. I really think we're going to get it resolved. I don't 
more good relations. We're gonna have, us. oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. You, but, you, you, but, you know, it takes two to tango, you know? Okay, this clip actually enrages me deeply down. I mean, a lot of times I'm a chill dude and Trump can say a lot of crazy stuff and it just bounces off me, whatever. But this one genuinely makes me mad. Zelensky is on here, or is over here, on behalf of the Ukrainian people. He's trying to be diplomatic with Trump and say, I hope we can have relations. But Trump is too sucked up with his buddy Vladimir Putin because Putin is a strong man dictator and Trump loves to look up to dictators like that. So, so Donald Trump says, oh, it takes two to tango and shoots down Zelensky. He doesn't even shoot him down. This gives me high school bully vibes. Like that is what a high school bully would do. The way that Trump kind of chuckles right here. Oh, I see. We're gonna yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's high school bully stuff right there. And Zelensky is being genuine. He is trying to save the lives of Ukrainian people. And watching this clip with the added context of Trump just loving Vladimir Putin. I mean, we already knew that, but I think this is a whole new layer revealed and confirmed. It's insane. Trump praised Putin as a genius when he initiated the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, and since then, he has refused to say that he wants Ukraine to win its war against Russia. That should be the easiest thing ever. Our ally, Ukraine, is fighting a war against a dictator, and Trump always says, we'll see what happens. It never should have happened. Maybe we'll give some land up. He has criticized American aid to Ukraine and leaned on congressional Republicans not to approve more assistance. He has boasted that if he wins, he will negotiate to end the war in Ukraine within 24 hours and even do so before the inauguration. And honestly, that makes more sense now. And when Trump has been saying that he could free Evan Gerskovich from the Russian prisons, now we know he does have a direct line to Putin. When I was covering this a few months back, I vividly remember saying the way that Trump's talking really seems like he has a direct line to Putin somewhere. He is basically implying that right there. And now we have direct confirmation. I also want to play you this clip of all of these Republican governors, all of these Republican congressmen saying FEMA has been helping. President Biden has been helping. And if you're wondering how this connects to Donald Trump being a Russian stooge, well, one of Russia's core goals is to destabilize the West through disinformation warfare. Vladimir Putin's not going to go boots on ground in the U.S., but what he can do is wage war using Twitter, using TikTok, using Instagram, and misinform the American people. So my broader point here is that Donald Trump is helping Vladimir Putin wage this disinformation warfare because he is lying to the people of North Carolina, lying to the people of Georgia and Florida, trying to confuse them. And how much do you think Vladimir Putin is salivating when he sees Donald Trump confusing American citizens on his behalf? So when I show you this clip, of governors saying, hey, Biden has been helpful. We have talked to Biden. FEMA has been helpful. I want you to keep in mind that they're they're contradicting what Donald Trump has been saying and what Vladimir Putin wants Trump to say. As of today, what has been the ongoing kind of federal assistance for South Carolina? It's what has been, been? been superb. We are, we're getting, getting assistance and we're asking for everything we need. They're doing a great job. They can always work harder. There's always kinks in the slinky. We're working them out behind the scenes. And you see this rush of uh, local officials, TEMA, FEMA, from the federal to the state to the local, the local emergency management agencies, local county mayors with tears in their eyes out there serving their people. We're grateful for the quick actions and close communications that we have had with the president and with the FEMA team. We have been, uh, Sean, I have to say, working well with FEMA. Uh, they, in fact, were moving very quickly over the last few days for us. So to President Biden, thank you for coming. There's Lindsey Graham thanking President Biden. Lindsey Graham is one of Donald Trump's closest allies, if you even want to say that. But my broader point here, again, is that Donald Trump wants to destabilize certain regions of the U.S. during a natural disaster. And who does that benefit more than Vladimir Putin? Genuinely. This article reads, Don't tell anybody. Bob Woodward book claims Putin urged Trump to keep quiet about gift. Again, quote, Please don't tell anybody you sent these to me, Putin said. I don't care, Trump said in response. Fine. No, no, Putin said. I don't want want you to tell anybody because people will get mad at you, not me. They don't care about me. I feel like Trump and Putin do that thing where it's like, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. But back to this big article from NPR that originally broke. Mr. Trump has not explained 
how he would end the war in Ukraine, but possible terms described last month by his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, sounded a lot like what Mr. Putin would want, exactly what Putin would want. Mr. Vance said that Russia could keep Ukrainian territory it has seized by force in violation of international law and receive a, quote, guarantee of neutrality from Ukraine, which would never be allowed to join NATO. There are so many things wrong with this. Let me just rapid fire them off real quick. Saying that Ukraine can never join NATO is stripping sovereignty away from the people of Ukraine and from the government of Ukraine. Allowing Russia to violate international law and steal land and get away with that, again, emboldens people like Xi Jinping to steal the land of Taiwan, and they'll go in with the mindset, hey, if we can just grab a little bit of territory, Trump will probably just let us keep it. He did that with Russia. And number three, Giving up Ukrainian land to Russia means that you're just kicking the can down the road. I say this all the time, but Russia's main war tactic is to start a war, pause that war when it's convenient for them, and then just reignite it down the road after they've rearmed. You can look at Crimea in 2014. Putin invades. He doesn't get too far. He captures it. He he backs off. He rearms. And then boom, 10 years later, they go back in, or sorry, eight years later, they go back in in 2022. And Putin is stronger than he was in 2014. So the broader point is, in 10 years, Putin could just reinvade and do the exact same thing and grab more land. Mr. Woodward's book does not report what Mr. Trump and Putin discussed in the early call of 2024 four, which is this year, nor does it provide details about the additional calls mentioned by the Trump aide. It quotes Jason Miller, a top campaign aide to Mr. Trump, saying that he had not heard that they are talking, so I'd push back on that. But he also said, quote, I'm sure they know how to get in touch with each other if they did want to talk. That doesn't instill much confidence in me. This Washington Post article reads, Putin, petrified of the coronavirus, accepted the supplies from Trump, but took pains to prevent political fallout, but not for him, for his American counterpart. Counterpart. He cautioned Trump not to reveal that he had dispatched the scarce medical equipment to Moscow, according to the new book. Four years later, the personal relationship between the two men appears to have persisted, Woodward reports, as Trump campaigns to turn to the White House and Putin orchestrates his bloody assault on Ukraine. They both go hand in hand. In early 2024, the former president, I hate those words, ordered an aide away from his office at Mar-a-Lago, his private club and residence in Florida, so he could talk to Vladimir Putin. Now, these interactions between Trump Trump and the authoritarian leader of a country at war were revealed by Bob Woodwork. And his conclusion is that Trump is much worse than Richard M. Nixon, whose presidency was undone by the Watergate scandal, who was exposed by the very same Bob, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. Anyone seen the movie All the President's Men? Go check out the movie All the President's Men. Sorry, I just love that movie. Trump campaign spokesperson Stephen Chung said, quote, none of these made up stories by Bob Woodward are true. Remember, that is Stephen Chung's job. Donald Trump could be on camera putting a baby in a blender and Stephen Chung would say, you know, that baby deserved it. The baby was a radical liberal. All he does is defend Trump. It, then Chung issues a string of personal attacks on the author and says Trump didn't give him an interview for the book. Chung argued that the book, quote, either belongs in the bargain bin of the fiction section of a discount bookstore or is used toilet tissue. <laughs> I don't with publication on the eve of the presidential election, Woodward, who has chronicled the success and failures of U.S. presidents for 50 years, concludes that Trump is unfit for office while President and Joe Biden and his team, mistakes notwithstanding, exhibited, quote, steady and purposeful leadership. VP Kamala Harris, the Democratic presidential nominee, makes several appearances in the narrative with Woodward presenting her as a shrewd and loyal number two to Biden, but not an influential voice in his administration's foreign policy. There you go. And that does follow. For any of you that are disillusioned with the way that Biden has handled Israel and Palestine, Kamala Harris seems to have a different approach. The book is Woodward's fourth since Trump's upset victory in 2016. It focuses principally on the twin wars consuming Biden's national security team, Russia's all-out war with Ukraine, which began in February of 2022, and Israel's campaign against Hamas, which began a year and a day ago. Now, there's a lot more to break down, and I'll make many more videos, but if you appreciate what I do and if you want to help boost this pro-democracy message, all that I ask of you is to drop a like, drop some comments for me, make sure that you watch until the end, make sure that you're subscribed, and most importantly, have a great day yourself. Peace out.